Well, good morning. Happy Wednesday morning. Good morning to all of you folks. Good to see all of you folks already bright and early on a rainy Wednesday. Almost feels like a fall day outside or a spring day outside. Almost feels like a spring day outside. Let's not rush spring summer here, folks. So uh, what a day it is. So it's nice to see all of your numbers are climbing. You're already signing on, looking to have a good time and hear from the word of the Lord this morning. Hi, Mary Kay. Good to see you. God bless you. Very good to see all of you folks. I trust and pray that the Lord is with you. You know, we've been praying for a number of you and I'm seeing results that the Lord's hand is moving and that is a good thing. So God bless you this morning. Thank you again for tuning in. We welcome you this morning and uh, we just look forward to a great time in the Lord. So hi, Wendy. Nice to see you this morning. We are in John this morning, the Gospel of John. If you've got your Bible and you just want to be ahead of the game, we're going to John. Hi, Denise. Nice to see you this morning. Congratulations is in order, I think, but uh, good to see all of you. So thanks, everybody, Wanda, everybody now tuning in. Get yourself a cup of joe. Get yourself some hot tea, if you would, and, uh, and sit right down and enjoy a little time with the Lord. Because we're going to read some scripture this morning. We're going to talk about the goodness of the Lord. Hi, Star. Nice to see you. Lewis, good to see you. God bless all of you folks. Really good to be with you on a Wednesday morning. And, and uh, we about got February whipped, folks. I think it's like the 22nd of February already. Another week, and this one's in the books, and we're going into March. Hi, Elaine. Good to see you. God bless all of you folks. Debbie, nice to see you. Yep, uh, really good to see all of you folks. And uh, Pam, good to see you. Life is good. Hello, Gino. Always a pleasure. And uh, our prayers continue to be with those on the prayer request line. We're seeing the Lord do good things. Lots of people have surgeries and things, and the Lord is with them every step of the way. God bless all of you. Good to see all of you. So uh, we uh, continue to pray for Thelma. The, uh, the report we got yesterday about noontime just after was all good, but we will see what today brings. But our, uh, our prayers continue to be with her, and I know the Lord's doing something special there. That is a major thing, and the Lord is with her every step of the way. So we're going to get started here in just a moment. The, 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 um, the uh, devotion this morning, there, I'll get it out here in a minute. The devotion is, we don't just receive grace but we receive grace upon grace. Not just grace, it's grace upon grace. Hello, Luann, good to see you. Coming to us live from where? South Missouri, no doubt. And I hope everything's going well for you. Hi, Patty, nice to see you. Patty and Frank, God bless you. Just settle in for a little bit. If you got your Bible, we're gonna read from the New King James Version. We're gonna get started in about 30 seconds is all, and I'm going to give you your day after that. How about that? We're going to give you your day. So we are in John chapter 1, staying in John chapter 1. Hello, Kathy. Nice to see you. God bless all of you folks. I'm telling you, for your dedication and uh, and goodness, we uh, we just thank the Lord for every single one of you. Yep, Luann, South Missouri. That's Branson. <laughs> That's South Missouri to me. You get any farther south and you're Arkansas, huh? So uh, let's get started this morning. We're going to go from John chapter 1, verses 14 through 18. Let me pray for you. Just pray that everything is ready to go and comes out just as it's supposed to. Hi, Deidre. Good to see you this morning. Father, we thank you for your goodness and for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for your, your good word that speaks to us and, and is so refreshing and encouraging that it lifts us up, that it, uh, that it sometimes corrects us. But God, it's always meant for our goodness. It's always meant for, uh, for us to be better as a result of it. And I pray that that would be the case today. May we understand that you don't just supply grace, but you provide grace upon grace for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's listen to what the Lord has to say this morning. The first chapter of John is an amazing chapter. Last week we talked about that uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God and the Word was God. And from the very beginning, he was there. And now this kind of ties together. I remember the old evangelism days where we would pull these two together, that he was God, the Word was God. And we would then say, and he became flesh and dwelt among us. So I've always loved 
verse 14. There is so much power in verse 14. That's where we're starting. John chapter 1, verses 14 through 18 in the Gospel of John. And it goes like this. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. Some versions say grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, for grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. I, uh, I think it's important to understand, all throughout the Bible, God's desire has been to reveal himself to his people. He has always wanted to, to walk with and, and be with him and dwell and uh, reveal himself to his people. All throughout this book, from cover to cover, God's desire is not to be some distant thing, but to dwell with his people. When Moses led them out of Egypt, you remember that. How did he lead them? He led them with a cloud by day and a fire by night. That's how he led them. And when the cloud and the fire moved, you know what? The, the people moved. Lord, The Lord led them. He dwelt with them and he led them. And in Exodus 25, 8, I love this. We read that God told Moses, have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so that I can live among them. Some versions even say, so that I may tabernacle among them. Have them build me a holy sanctuary so I can live among them. I think that is great. The Lord didn't say, I'm not living with those people. Build me a big mansion over here. Now, when you move, you got to take it down and rebuild it because I'm not living in no tents or anything. That is not what we see here. The Lord said, let's build me a tent. Build me a sanctuary so that I can live among my people. God provided instructions on how to build this tent. Some places he even calls it the tent of meeting. You want to meet the Lord? You do it at the tent of the meeting. For, uh, the tent of meeting, because that's where the Lord dwells. And he was right amongst his people. God would journey with his people all the way through to the promised land. He would journey with them the entire way. I want you to know this morning, God desires to dwell with his people. It is his desire to dwell with his people. And John chapter 1, verse 14 is a small, short verse. I'm telling you, it is a game changer. It changes everything. John 1, 14 changes everything. It says this, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That God himself became flesh and dwelt among us. That's what it said. The word, the creator, the illustrator, the reason for everything has become flesh and dwelt or tabernacled, if you will, with his people. The uh, Hebrew word there is the kabod, just as the kabod, C-H-A-B-O-D, and there's a number of different spellings for that, that talks about the glory of God. The glory of God was seen in the cloud, the glory of God was seen in the fire. It was seen in the smoke. The glory of God was in, seen in all of that. And you know what? The glory of God was also seen in the Son that came to dwell with us. He came to earth with the glory of God. Only the high priest could enter the holies of holies. Only the high priest could do that, to behold the glory of God. Only the once a year the high priest could go behind the curtain and take all the people's sins and all the people's prayer requests and go behind the curtain and offer it to the Lord. And providing that he was a holy man, he got to live. But he got to see the glory of God. But now I want you to know, with the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross, illustrated by the veil being rent from top to bottom, the veil, the very veil that the priest went behind, to meet with the Lord was ripped completely open. Now, why was that? A coincidence? Now, why would when Jesus died on the cross, why would the veil be rent from top to bottom? I want you to know this. He allows all of us to enter and behold the glory of God on a daily basis and without restriction. He wants all of us to be able to do that. No longer, folks, do you have to go to a priest on behalf of yourself to go to the Lord. 
you can boldly go there himself. When was the last time you humbly, and I say humbly, entered into the Lord's presence? When was the last time that you could honestly say, you know what? I entered into the Lord's presence and I found the Lord. I saw the Lord. It was not because he hasn't given you access. Oh, I only give you access once a year. I only give you a, oh, you missed it, five minutes. That's all you get this year. You have access to the Lord. I want to say to you, take advantage of the access that is offered because the Lord gives it to you because he dwells with his people. God wants to dwell with his people. He desires it. The scripture says in 1 Peter, cast all of your cares upon him because he cares for you. Cast all of your cares upon him. You have that right. You have that ability to take your cares to him. I want you to know when I compared a little bit between the law and grace, a little bit of the law that Moses received, when I compared that a little bit with law and grace, the law was given to mankind on a smoking, shaking mountain where the people just feared the Lord. The grace of God was given to the people in a quiet manger. What a contrast. The law was written on tablet, tablets of stone. Thou shalt not. The grace of God is written on the hearts of men and women. It's written on their hearts in the love of the Lord. The grace of the Lord. When the law came down, read it for yourself in Exodus. When the law came down, 3,000 individuals died. When the grace of the Lord came down, you'll read it. In, uh, in Acts, the 3,000 people were saved. 3,000 people received the Lord as their Savior and was saved that day. The law is just and rigid, and it leads to death. And you know what? Grace gives life everlasting. What a difference. I love this in this scripture verse, the prophetic words of John the Baptist. John the Baptist, did he even know what he was saying? The Holy Spirit speaking through him said these words. Let me read it to you. He who comes after me was before me. He who came after me was before me. Now, what in the world does that mean? Jesus told the Jewish priests, we talked about that a little bit the last week or so, before Abraham was, I am. I am. Before Abraham was, I am. That's John 8, 50, 58. If you're keeping score at home, the Holy Spirit through John the Baptist re reveals Jesus' internal being to his younger cousin. The younger John the Baptist was his older cousin, but yet he was his younger cousin. Grace for grace. Grace for grace is what this talks about. It literally means continual. It means lasting. It means inexhaustible. It means unending. It means never extinguishing, never going out. It means eternal. It means cost covering grace. Even when sin abounds, and many times it does, it may seem overwhelming and it may seem devastating. It can seem that way. I want you to know this morning, grace abounds all the more. Oh, he could never receive me. I've failed him so many times. Grace abounds all the more. I say to you this morning, embrace the person of Jesus Christ and you will never exhaust the grace of God. You will never run out of the grace of God. Embrace the Lord Jesus and it's never ending grace in Jesus name. I hope that speaks to you this morning. It is grace upon grace. We're not just getting grace. It's grace upon grace upon grace heaped upon grace. Sounds like a great name for a church, if you ask me. Let me pray for you this morning. Father, we thank you for these folks, God. So many times, if they're like me, Lord, that we have failed you time after time. When we swore, we promised it wasn't going to happen again. And yet we find ourselves falling into the old traps, the old things in life. But thank God that there's grace upon grace. Thank you, Lord, that you dwell with your people, that you don't live up in heaven someplace, and sometimes we think we have to do that. We have to shout to the Lord so that he can hear. But the truth is, since Jesus has came to the earth, you dwell among your people. God, I pray that each one of us would take advantage of that, that we would have a set-down session with you, God, where we talk to you almost face-to-face, -face, God, where we talk to you not just in a in a uh, some hierarchy prayer, but we can just say to you, Lord, Lord, this is where I'm at today. 
I know you're here with me, but it sure don't feel like it. I know you're for me, but it sure don't feel like it. Lord, I just need you to encourage me. You do that, and he will. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you this morning. I, uh, I pray that you have just a terrific day on the 22nd day of February. And, uh, and spring is coming, folks. Spring is coming. It's getting closer and closer all the time. I see birds. I saw robins yesterday, cardinals. I saw all of them. I'd say it's coming back. God bless you this morning. I pray that you have a terrific day. You have a great day in the Lord. Just remember, he walks with you every step of the way. God bless you.